a teenager and his friend are on a mission to hack into their local computer center and help themselves to some free computer time. The hacker's name is Bill Gates. Bill Gates was a guy who came from a well-to-do family in Seattle, had a great education, was a smart guy, was by all accounts a very driven and competitive guy. That was his nature. Bill wanted to win. Even as a teenager, Gates possesses a rare knowledge. He knows how to operate a mainframe computer. Mainframe computers were these huge computers that experts used, you know, to crunch data. They were used by corporations, and, you know, the gods of tech had to run these things. They couldn't be handled by regular people. In 1974, the concept of the personal computer doesn't exist. Until a company in New Mexico introduces the first computer small enough to be used by the general public. It's called the Altair 8800. It was a proof of concept toy, in a way. I mean, it was a sophisticated toy. It was a direction, but it didn't do a whole lot. It didn't have a, a terminal, it didn't have a keyboard didn't have any of the things that we typically associate uh, with a computer right now. Most importantly, there's no easy way to operate it. When the Altair is released, Bill Gates is a student at Harvard University. Gates and his friend Paul Allen know that to be useful, the Altair needs a programming language. And they decide to give it one. Bill Gates and Paul Allen sensed that something was in the air. They didn't want to spend the next two or three years watching the parade go by. They use an early form of programming in which holes are punched into spools of paper in patterns that form commands. To prove that their program works, they'll have to take it directly to the makers of the Altair. You go. You look older, they'll take you seriously. Okay. But Gates and Allen aren't the only ones determined to make computers easier to use. 3,000 miles away, the future of the personal computer is being imagined in a completely different way. Steve Jobs is a college dropout who has just returned from a spiritual quest in India and has limited experience with computers. He was part of the hippie crowd, the whole drugs and all kinds of alternative lifestyles. He was not trained in computing. One of Jobs' friends is Steve Wozniak, an electronics and computer hobbyist who's come up with a radical idea. Hey, what you working on? I got something new. Check this out. Wozniak has built a computer with a microprocessor, like the Altair. But he's added two other key components, a keyboard and a monitor. Instead of having to punch code into paper, Programming can now be written directly using the same keys found on a typewriter. It was a eureka moment. I could type commands on the computer and they came up on my TV screen. These things I call eureka moments are surprises that even you didn't realize how important they were going to be for how things work. Jobs is immediately intrigued. 
but unlike Wozniak, Jobs is less interested in how